YouTube, welcome to the Emporium. My name is Michael. So for this video, I thought I'd share with you a recent solar power upgrade I did to my travel trailer. But really this could be any vehicle. It could be an RV, it could be a boat. It doesn't really matter. The principles are all the same. I managed to do the whole project for under $300 and that's Canadian. So that's pretty cheap as you can imagine. I've already completed the work. So I'll just go through the components and show you how I did it and why I made the decisions that I did. If you look over my shoulder here, you'll see the solar controller. Uh, this is a 20 amp model that I fitted. It's a cheap unit from Amazon and I'll put all the links in below so you can see all the components and how the prices break down. This is a 100 watt solar panel system, but it could be easily expanded to 200 watts if need be. I used this same solar system last year at hunting, so that was in November time and I was getting reasonably good results. Typically my batteries last a couple of days if I run the furnace intermittently, it's a big draw on the batteries and I normally have to resort to having a, a generator plugged in and then charge on the batteries, which is a little bit painful. Uh, with the solar panel, even in November, I managed to stretch that out to about five days. So I was, I was quite surprised. So I was getting about five amps of charging power from the panel, which I was quite pleased because it was November and it was kind of a winter sun. So that's quite respectable. Just take a look at the charger. So as you can see with the charger, it has two USB outlets for charging and two DC plugs that you can plug other things in. The solar panels are connected on these two terminals, the battery in the middle, and you can put a, uh, a light source or a load across the, the far two terminals. Um, it does have a, quite a nice display and you can switch on and off the, the ports with this button. It also displays the temperature, uh, the current battery, and any output. Currently we don't have any, so that's why that shows a little moon to display that there's no sun. I screwed this to the travel trailer wall with four simple screws, and this cover um, I made just on a 3D printer just to cover my exit point. I ran the wires from just below, and I'll show you that now. So if anyone wishes to make one of these covers, I'll put the design on my website and you can download it as normal for free. I fit the wire up this panel up into the charge unit just by the side of the fridge here and put a uh, inline fuse and I used a 12 gauge wire which is suitable for the, the load and current that we're, we're putting across and this feeds to an outside plug that I'll show you next. So from the inside of the travel trailer, I just fitted this external uh, receptacle cover and I have just a standard 110 receptacle. Uh, the reasons for that will become apparent pretty soon. So for the panel, this is a 100 watt Coleman crystalline solar unit and uh, it works pretty good. But what I did is I set a, uh, just a simple 110 outlet uh, plug. So when I want to plug into my solar charger, it's very simple. So the beauty of this system is if I want to add another panel for any reason, I can just plug it into the second outlet from the receptacle or inlet it should be. <laughs> yeah. So the beauty of this system is if I want to add another panel, I simply plug the second panel into the next available port which would wire it directly in parallel, which is perfect for how the solar panels are best uh, connected together. So this panel is about 500 Canadian dollars from Canadian Tire, but they regularly go on sale for half price. You can also pick these up on Amazon for under 200 Canadian dollars, but they're a different brand, but I think they're pretty much the same. So I tucked all the cable along the inside of the travel trailer chassis and just went up through a normal opening. And where I had to go through any hard holes in the frame, I used this uh, half inch flexible conduit just to protect the cable in. You could also do the same for the whole cable if you wished, but I didn't feel it was necessary. So this is something I fitted a long time ago. This is a welding connector which I used to uh, just remove the ground from the battery so I can isolate the battery at any time. It's a very quick disconnect for long-term storage. 
And then within this battery box, you can see the, the batteries are connected in parallel. So as you can see, I've just connected the charging cables across the positive and negative. And I've also included another fuse at this point as well, just for safety. So let's talk about some of the pros and cons of the system. Number one, it's very easy to install. Number two, it's actually very cheap. Number three, if you had a, another charger, you'd be able to move the solar panel between several different places. So a cabin, or if you had a, an RV, a travel trailer, and a boat, you could just take the panel with you and plug it in wherever you go. Number four, you don't need a lot of technical expertise to put this together. Number five, apart from the outside outlet, you don't have to make any holes in your RV. If you use just the existing ports where maybe pipes or other cables go through, it's quite easy to figure it all out. There's no hard drilling or cutting of steel or anything very difficult that's going to ruin your RV. So some of the negatives from installing this way is it's not permanent. So you can't just put it on the roof of your RV, drive away or travel trailer. You have to move the panel around, which is not always bad. You can face the panel to wherever the sun is, which is kind of handy. And I just prop it up with a simple stick and that seems to work pretty good. Number two, because you have different connectors connecting the copper together, there's losses between those connections. So the less connections you have, the better the transfer of the current. I have a few interconnects, but I'm happy with that. I know this panel can output about six amps uh, that I've seen so far, but theoretically it should be able to output around 10 amps, uh, but I'm unlikely to see that in Canada, I think. Maybe in Africa. Number three, the maximum amount of current that this system can handle is about 20 amps. Uh, that's all the control is rated for. I don't ever see him putting more than maybe 200 watts of solar panels uh, outside. And even then, even if I added a third one, I doubt I'd even exceed 20 amps total. You want to keep the solar panels as close to your travel trailer as possible. The closer they are, the shorter the cables and the lower the loss of the power transfer from the panels to the charger and there to the battery. So shorter equals more power. However, you could add a short extension cable of the appropriate gauge, maybe 12 or 10 gauge, and extend them out so that you can get into bright sunlight in case that you didn't have anything pretty close to you. So I hope you've enjoyed the video and it's given you some ideas about how you could install solar panels on your RV or travel trailer. So for now, enjoy your summer camping and take care. Damn. And as always, thank you very much for watching. If you like my videos, leave me a comment, maybe a thumbs up, and don't forget to subscribe.